Brian, thanks for meeting with me today. Why is the role of a GP so important? General practitioners look after the whole person and I think that is what's underestimated. So when a patient comes in, it's not just the physical problem that they came in with, but it's also their family background, the other illnesses that they might have, and how they're coping with the, the presentation on that day. What are some of the things you like about being a GP? Look, I think the best thing about general practice is a relationship with patients. Um, when they come in, they're an individual, uh, you react and relate to them as individuals, not sort of sick people, but uh, as a family member, they may have uh, parents who come and see you or children who see you. And then the next thing is that it's the intellectual challenge. You know that you're usually the first person to see them with a particular problem and possibly the only one to do so. And so there's the intellectual challenge of working out what's actually wrong. For example, if it's a chest pain, is it heart or is it something else far less um, troublesome? Yes. What are some of the things that GPs do that you believe deserve more recognition? I think the complexity of the consultation and that whole person perspective and the uh, evidence-based approach that we're um, virtually mandated to do in terms of not just making the diagnosis, but also giving the treatment or the management of that condition. So uh, sort of no dodgy creams, gels or, or medications, but things that are proven to work and also uh, are cost effective. What are some of the big issues currently facing GPs? I think for general practice, the biggest hurdle is probably government recognition of the complexity of the task. So, you know, it's easy to understand that if it's an open heart operation or it's a brain operation, you know, lots of skills needed. But just for a simple diagnosis of, as I said, chest pain, is it something that's going to kill the patient in the next few hours and so needs to be rushed to a hospital? Or is it something that needs um, simpler treatment? So I think it's that complexity and for government to understand what's going on. And then it's also the acceptance that we actually have businesses to run. There are other staff involved in uh, running the practice and there are costs of rent, uh, the IT, all those things that make it a business that needs to be profitable, let alone what the doctor gets paid for that professional and high level uh, intellectual input. Given we're seeing more chronic disease in New South Wales, can GPs do more to help keep patients out of hospital? I think, as I said before, it's that relationship with the patient mm. and that goes to continuity of care. And what that means is seeing the patient virtually over the lifetime, but certainly an extended period, and managing their health problems in an efficient and uh, sort of preventive way. So it's identifying what issues they have that are risks to their health, and if we talk about chest pain or heart, then it's obviously smoking, cholesterol, high blood pressure is the big things. And knowing that patient, knowing that patient's uh, family history goes to much better care. It's that continuity mm -hmm. that you can have a plan to prevent ill health. And when you think about prevention and hospital admissions, um, that's the uh, sort of misunderstanding. Prevention starts, uh, you know, years down, uh, Prevention starts with younger people, identifying the risks early, and then uh, the outcomes are going to be way down the track. So when politicians think of prevention and doing all these wonderful things, their timeline might be one or two years, but medical timelines are actually 10 to 15 years. That's what continuity of care and preventive health care is all about. How do we see the role of GPs changing in the delivery of team care? I think the vision for reform in community health has been the idea of team care. The problem sometimes is that who's going to be the leader of that team care? And really, the doctor, the medical person, has to be the leader because they're the only one with the training to um, diagnose and manage in a holistic way. So that training of the GP means that they must be the leader of the care. And that doesn't mean they do everything but rather it's team care, using allied health, using nursing services as part of the team. Has the role of nursing changed in the delivery of general practice services? I think team care 
means having nurses in your practice and recognising their professionalism, respecting their qualifications and their expertise in areas. And we work well as GPs and uh, team uh, players with nurses and allied health, but it's getting those roles correct, getting the leadership um, recognised by government and really uh, clearing up the communication uh, between all those team players. Brian, thanks for your time today.